retired voter with very little interest in Republican Party politics. Uh, and um, I met Ron Paul, came on scene, and decided he was going to run for office. And that inspired me and many others of you in this room uh, to get involved and to support him. He is uh, the only candidate that I can say wholeheartedly uh, deserves my vote and my support to the point where I would feel uh, very bad if I did not give that to him. I've uh, served in the military here at Fort Rich for uh, many years.
one witness, that's Linda standing over here. Linda. <laughs> introduction and uh, sounds like a lot of excitement. Uh, it sounds like you know there's an election going on. You know, I've, been, I've been talking about the uh, principles of liberty for a long time, but I've always thought that the state of Alaska has already gotten the message and it sounds like it has. But uh, it couldn't happen without a state like this because people from Alaska I have known have always been independent minded. They just assumed the feds stay out of their lives and stay out of their lives. So, so it certainly is great. You know, uh, our country has a lot of problems, and I, I get a bit frustrated uh, with with what the Republican Party offers a lot of times to the Democrats. Have you ever noticed that we change parties one to the other and policies never change? Have you ever noticed that? Yeah. Well, that, that, that is annoying at, at times because they speak a little different language, but you know, Republicans are conservatives and they want to balance the budget and cut the spending, but they don't do it when they get the chance. And I want to change that. I want to change that. by one trillion dollars of real spending. We've got to figure out where to cut it, and uh, we, we haven't worked out, we have a plan to do this, uh, but it, it cuts some areas where a lot of times Republicans don't want to cut, and that is this overseas spending, the welfare that goes to foreigners and foreign banks and foreign aid and foreign wars. We could cut a lot of money out of overseas spending and move rapidly toward the balanced budget. Yeah. You know, still today, if you do polling in the, in the country, most people still list the economy as being the number one problem. Jobs and uh, now inflation is getting to be a problem. Of course, a lot of people look for inflation to rising prices, but inflation really is the increase of supply money by the Federal Reserve. You've heard of that group of people. <laughs> but right now, the consequence of inflating the currency or debasing the currency is that prices will rise, and that's what we're seeing now. You know, they're trying to figure out, and there's a lot of talk in a campaign about uh, gasoline prices going up. Oh, they're four dollars, could go five dollars, could go six dollars. Why is the price of gasoline going up? Well, the number one reason the price of gasoline going up is the value of your dollar is going down. That opens your prices up. So this is uh, this is something that the people are complaining about, and uh, yet I don't believe you're hearing the real answers from the other candidates, and and that is that we don't have a free market. What they would like to do is uh, say that the problems we have today are at the fault of all those people in the last 15 or 20 years, all that free enterprise, too much free enterprise. That is not true. We've had too much government is what we've had. So if that caused the problem, why do they think they can solve the problem by increasing spending, increasing borrowing, increasing regulation, increased taxation, and continue with increasing the wars? That's not going to help. So we have to change the direction, and it's not complicated what we have to do. Because I'm convinced that we got into this mess because we've had way too many individuals in Washington who either couldn't read, or if they read it, they couldn't understand it. If they didn't couldn't understand it, they didn't follow it, they didn't take their oath of office seriously. He said, only people who have respect for the rule of law who will obey the Constitution, I believe we need to correct that. Revolutionary period of time. 
So they, they didn't like it. They were, they were uh, darn, and they were determined to make sure that we wouldn't fall in that same trap. So they did a few things in the Constitution. First, they said, we, the states, everybody could use nothing other than silver and gold as legal tender, and that still is the law of the land. Also, also it said that nobody could emit bills of credit, which is paper money. And they also did not give any authority for the Federal Reserve System. So if we follow the Constitution, guess what? We wouldn't have a bet. Until 
the Federal Reserve is removed, we should have a full audit of the Federal Reserve. And 80-some percent of the American people agree with it. Liberals, conservatives, independents, Republicans, Democrats, they say oversight is necessary. We might not agree with this or that, but the people are behind this, and it is so important that we find out. I'm convinced that we found out the full story about what the Fed has done in the past and what they're doing now and what they're planning to do in Europe to bail them bail uh, the Europeans out right now, the American people would be quite angry and they would demand that we have people follow the Constitution, have honest money, have money that they can't bring. <laughs> the reason why the monetary issue is so important is that we wouldn't have this deficit crisis without the Fed. You know, the best thing that could happen in a in a small government republic is to pay your bills as you go along. And that's what Jefferson argued. He lost the argument, and, and it was permissible for the federal government to borrow money. Now, if you had direct taxation for everything we did, government would not get very big because the people would say, hey, we can't afford this. But if they can borrow the money, they sort of hide it, and then, they, uh, and then the next thing they do is they print money, and you lose value, that is a tax. Some people suffer more than others. So that is, it facilitates big government. If the Fed couldn't buy the debt, guess what would happen? Interest rates would go up. And interest rates would go up, 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 and the government would say, hey, you, you, we're borrowing too much money. And the, and the Congress would be forced to cut back. But today, the more they spend, the lower the interest rates go. You know, they just print the money. And it's a fallacy. It's a figment of our, their imagination that they think this is the answer. And the worst part of it all is it enhances big government. We get a government that believes they can afford it and have the entitlement system, the welfare state, and then they also embark on this, on this military adventurism around the world. And I have made a suggestion once, offered a, uh, legislation to this effect to make this point. I said, let's repeal withholding taxes. This, you know, just not happen. Now, that doesn't solve all the problem of taxation, but it would, eventually. Because first off, is why is the businessman required to keep all these records turned over to the federal government and then be on the defensive if there is any discrepancy? So we become a slave to the government as a record keeper and a, and a, a participant in the tax uh, system. But what if today, uh, we had to pay as we go, and everybody had to write a check every month to pay all the bills. This would end rather quickly, and it would be a tax rebellion rapidly, and the whole thing would stop. Yeah. As long as the borrowing can get on and the inflation goes on at last, but what's happened now in the last four years and why things are so different now, is that people know it's not true, that you can have perpetual prosperity by spending and borrowing, and that debt is good. Debt is bad, printing money is bad, and borrowing is bad. And most people, and most people know that uh, after, this, after the crisis of four and five years ago, that things aren't back in order. Matter of fact, I'm convinced that uh, our, our real problem started uh, actually 10 years ago, at the time when the NASDAQ bubble burst. We've had really no economic growth in the past 10 years. Uh, productive jobs have not come back. We've had 34 million new people coming into, uh, into the workforce, and the jobs uh, just aren't there. Just saw a statistic today of many, many millions who are on disability. You know, they have unemployment, but if somebody has, happens to go on disability, and there are many millions, and sometimes, you know, you just wonder why there's so many on disability. But the more people on disability, better if the unemployment statistics look, because they're not getting unemployment benefits, and they don't have jobs or their disability, it costs a lot of money, but it distorts the unemployment benefits, uh, unemployment numbers. They claim that the unemployment, you know, was 9%, has dropped down to 8.5%. The truth is, if you look at even government statistics and the free market statistics, Unemployment is about 22%. And that's why, that is why people don't feel good about the economy. And the inflation rate, of course, is much higher than they say. This hurts one group more than the other. People on fixed incomes, people on Social Security, 
or a, a limited amount. People who want to take care of themselves. They say they work hard, they don't trust the stock market, and they put their money and they want to save it like you're, you're supposed to do to take care of yourself. But guess what? You get less than 1% on CD, and the Federal Reserve just laughs at it. I've asked both Greenspan and Bernanke about this. I said, look, you want lower interest rates for the benefit of the bank, and you think it's going to stimulate the economy. What about an elderly couple that's saving money and they're trying to live off, uh, off their income and their interest, and, um, and, and, and they just blow it off. They said, well, you know, we have to do what's best for, you know, the economy and get the economy going and some people uh, might suffer. Uh, but it, it is totally destructive and everything is turned on its head and doing the wrong things. For instance, the government is supposed to, one of the purposes of government is to protect your liberty, protect your privacy, guarantee the Fourth Amendment. That's one of the secrecy of the government, and they destroy your privacy. So we need to reverse that. We need to make sure they understand that our private lives are our private lives, our economic lives, our medical lives are private and not, at, you know, not belonging to the government. and bounds, let me tell you.
everybody and make sure nobody falls through the cracks and all that. And they, what they do with, with this attempt to take, make sure nobody falls through the crack, they, cre they create these big, big gaps where more people fall through the cracks and then uh, people lose their jobs and, and the whole thing uh, falls down and, and, and doesn't work. So we... Um, we see the problems today, we're sensing it, whether it's the economic problems, the attack on personal liberties, but certainly on foreign policy. This has changed just in the last four years. The difference now compared to four years ago, the American people are tired of these wars that they want us to have. Take that delightly. 
And uh, one thing is there wouldn't be bipartisanship here. The whole country would want to be practicing their Second Amendment rights as well. Yeah.
really the greatest programs in the world. They're great growth right now. But there's so many people dependent. And if we if we just we don't just want to start there and say, okay, what we need to do is cut out food stamps and everything's going to be okay, or cut down Medicare. And that is essentially what they're doing on uh, on, on Social Security, they're decreasing the cost, you know, the money going out because the purchasing power goes down and the elderly are already suffering. So you will have a lot more of that unless we accept the idea that we change our foreign policy. I have it that we save five hundred billion dollars, you know, uh, with, with the change in foreign policy, and I'm convinced we'd have a stronger national defense, not a weaker. We would be less vulnerable, not more vulnerable. Today, where government uh, grew too big and, and destroyed the economy, uh, we don't have free markets, we don't have uh, sound money, we don't have balanced budget, and we wonder why we don't have the jobs. And a tax code is ridiculous. A regulatory control, uh, a regulatory code is out of control. But there's another thing that happens when government gets too big. When government grows, the people's liberty shrink. There is no doubt about it. And our government is way too big. And if you feel a burden of big government on your backs because you feel like you have less freedom of choice, it is a natural consequence of allowing the government to be too big. So the answer is we have to shrink the size and scope of our government. <laughs> Innocent people. 
people die that have nothing to do with what's going on. So but it would just be under more control if they would just follow the law is what we need to do. I mean, it is just horrible. It's, it's, it's a lawless society that we have today. It isn't the people. The lawless is too often with our own government. Is what's happening.
Constitution was designed for all of us, imperfect at the time, but there's no reason why we don't have a better understanding of liberty. We should bring people together once again because we want to all enjoy our freedom, maybe for different reasons, but we've become more tolerant. We invite people to come and to enjoy their liberty as they see fit. Now, you know, uh, it has been said by the founders many times that, you know, it doesn't it doesn't take a total majority to do this. We don't have to wait till we get 51%. Fresh fires of liberty in the minds of men. Ideas do have consequences, and they absolutely do. Bad ideas have bad consequences. Small number of people who are who are dedicated do change the country, and we do. We have a small number of people, but this number of people now is growing by leaps and bounds, and they're energetic, and they're getting involved. And I believe that we are have actually in the middle and of a of a major change in attitude, just as it was at the time of the depression, where they said. Free markets caused the depression, but by that time, they had uh, already undermined the system. Today, the system is going in a different direction. The people are waking up, especially the young people. I mean, the places where I go on campus... <laughs> understand this, uh, th th this means that you understand the marketplace and sound money, and uh, it, it should excite all of us. And this is what we have to do. We have to continue this. We have to do something in this election. If a strong message can be sent from Alaska, which is known for your independence and your love of liberty... <laughs> Necessary, the need for something, the understanding of what we need to put in its place, and now we have an energized group of people who are willing to work for it. So everybody has a responsibility. Your responsibilities are different for different people. We don't know exactly what your particular job is. It's to become well informed, but to participate. In the short run, we do know that we have a tremendous opportunity and on Tuesday to make a difference. I hope you will join and make sure that you will be there on Tuesday. who uh, are always, you know, causing trouble. But tyranny is ancient. It's been here around for the, the entire experience of history. It's only freedom that is relatively new. It's been barely tested. And we had a fantastic result. We became the wealthiest country, the biggest middle class ever, and the maximum amount of freedom. And, uh, and now it isn't there. Our middle class is shrinking and it's getting poorer. So there is a real challenge there. And if we don't want it to break down, which it will if we continue to do this, we just can, can't continue to do what we're doing. And right now, I don't see many offering an alternative to this, at least, you know, as other candidates or the other party, it seems like they're endorsing the same thing over and over again. So we have to present our case because it's so necessary that our case comes through. I believe that if we do our job right, that we can restore the greatness of this America we have.